for the uh, network X. So um, welcome everybody. Um, network X is a um, Python library for, for network analyzers and it um, basically solved the following problems. Um, I would say graphs are a very good representation for many um, computational, mathematical, or biological problems. They're just a, you know, a very nice mathematical construct to, to describe in interactions between, between players. And if you, if you, no matter in what field you are, I, I can, like, if you tell me a bit about your work, I can tell you, you, you have graphs in your work and graphs, you could profit from graphs and, and doing some graph analysis. So basically for all, for all of us, graphs are everywhere. Um, there exist a lot of standard algorithms and metrics to analyze graphs, to build graphs and so on. Like simple things are degree distributions, like algorithms like finding shortest paths, uh, looking at connectivity, uh, looking at clustering, robustness of transport pathways, um, looking at cycles and so on. Um, yeah, these are all um, uh, very interesting algorithms and everybody wants to use it if, if they have graph, but this is very difficult to implement, implement them correctly and especially to implement them efficiently. <laughs> this is like um, two main, main problems. And so um, um, all this implementing data structures and algorithms to work with graphs um, is something which we shouldn't solve. Um, so what is Network X? It's basically a Python package for the creation, manipulation, and the study of structure, dynamics, function um, of complex networks. And what it provides is on the one hand data structures for, for different kinds of graphs. I would say the most, the most Prominent graphs are like undirected graphs, directed graphs, and then there are also multigraphs. Multigraphs are basically graphs where you have multiple um, edges um, between the same nodes. So you have node one and node two, and multiple edges is a multigraph. And for some, some problems, these multigraphs are also important. Um, it contains many standard graph algorithms and um, provides um, um, measures for the network structure and the network analyzers. Very interestingly, it has also a lot of generators for classical graphs and random graphs, synthetic networks. This is often if you have like um, a system um, which works with graphs and you want to test it with a lot of networks and want to test its performance and so on. So just, you don't want to write your own random graph, um, graph generators, but you could just reuse this uh, generator classes. Um, importantly, nodes can be anything. It's, it's, you basically have your graph and you just any um, object your node could be any any object, any Python object you have, as long as, as it has a hash and can be can be stored, um, uh, is hashable. You can use it as a node, and similar, the edges can hold arbitrary data, um, and you can also put arbitrary objects or, or attributes on on the edges. Often these are things like weights if you have weighted graphs, but it could be time series data, whatever. Basically, you are, have um, can what you can put into a Python object, you could put in the nodes, you could put in the graph, or could put in the edges. So this is more like an abstraction layer, and um, every, every node or edge um, can have a much richer data structure. And this richer data structure is probably um, the domain-specific part if you, would, if you would use Network X. Uh, it's, it's open source, well tested, and this whole thing. Uh, I think the development started in 2014, so this is um, pretty, uh, pretty stable. And uh, I would say it's, it's used by most Python projects who work with, with graphs. That's basically the, the introductory part. And then um, uh, in the second part, I will give a, a, a quick, uh, quick demo. Um, and we'll just um, yeah, show a bit of um, how this basic library works. Um, this mainly based on the tutorial we have online. And um, I will just show um, some basic things, how to create graphs, not nodes, edges, how to um, um, add information to the edges and to the nodes, uh, a bit about um, the different generators and how you uh, would analyze, analyze graph with that. So it's basically just an import of the library. And then you have your graph and you can put basically any hashable object in the graph or in the, in the node or, or the edges. So um, your graph object G to add a node, you basically just add the hashable object here in, in this add node function. And then you would have, a, a, um, in this case, you would have a, a graph with, a, with a, a, a single node in it. In this, in this case, I stored an integer as, as, a, as a node object, not just for demonstration, but this could be basically uh, something more complex. 
Um, there are also con um, helper functions to add multiple nodes. It's basically if you have a list of objects and so on, you can just um, use the add from nodes. So at this point, we would have a, a graph where we just added three nodes, which don't have any edges and not connected. In addition, um, um, you can, um, um, to the actual object, you can store like an attribute dictionary. So it's basically um, a dictionary of information, which you can then use later on in the algorithms. For instance, if you would put weights in there, like the weighted algorithms can use them, or you can use them in your own, own algorithm. I would say this is a convenient way to store information um, at your nodes or at your edges. So at this point, we would have, um, I have to count one, two, three, four, five nodes in there, uh, nothing else. And um, yeah, one can now um, also use this graphs to generate new new graphs. Like for instance, um, here there are um, yeah, simple constructors um, um, for certain graphs. For instance, the path graph is just a linear chain. So if you want to generate a, a linear chain of the length 10, you can uh, call things like path graph. There are other generators for other graphs like fully connected uh, uh, components, like random graphs and so on. In this case here, we basically just generate a, a linear chain of uh, length 10 and we would add um, this linear, all basically all nodes and all edges from this one graph to another graph. So that's basically operations on graphs, add the one graph to another graph, um, make unions, make intersections and so on. So it's basically all these algorithms of you have, have graphs and you want to see the differences or the unions and so on, you can easily do that. So in this case, we just say, okay, add all the nodes from H to the, to the other graphs. Um, ah, sorry, no, uh, this, this was not completely correct what I said here. In this case, it's basically, we didn't put all the nodes and edges in there. We put just the graph in there as a, as a node object. Okay, this was uh, incorrect. The add no because we use the add nodes, if we would use an union, we would um, combine the graphs. In this case, we just use the graph to store a graph. So basically we make a graph of graphs. If this makes sense to you, but it's often like you can build like very complex structure if you have, like a graph of subgraphs and so on, you could just add the subgraphs um, because these are full objects also as nodes to, to the upper graph. Um, yeah, and you can build things. This would be the graph of graphs. Um, we can build graph of files, graph of functions and so on. And this is also like very powerful if you think about this um, functional aspect of Python, you can basically um, uh, store functional code and classes in the in the nodes, in the edges and, and build basically clever algorithms with this graph structure. It's not so much, okay, that the graph would represent like something in a um, real world application, but it were more like a very good data structure for your algorithms. Okay, um, edges, especially very, very similar. You would just have an add edge and um, uh, add edges from, from function. In this case, um, yeah, you need two, two arguments. The first is basically the, the first node and the second node um, is the second node in the edge. So here we would add, an, um, because G was an undirected graph, we would add an undirected edge from one to two. You also have constructors like um, this um, um, unpacking edge tuples. So you can just um, um, do similar things like here. So we add two, um, two edges, one from one to two and the other from two to three. Or just using a list of this um, edge tuples, we can add these um, yeah, here. Here we now would, um, we can basically um, use the edges from one, one graph and add them uh, to another graph. And um, this is internally called a network X, a so-called e-bunch, which is basically, I would say, a collection of edges with the, with the attribute information. And you can use that to, to add, uh, add that uh, to another graph. Okay, all basics very similar. You basically can either add single nodes, at the edges or add things from, from another graph. Again, G clear, um, just deletes everything. Um, important thing to note is um, um, that nodes and edges, which are already present in the model, in the graph are basically quietly ignored. So, so basically if you add a node one and then you add an edge from uh, one to two, the node one is not generated two times, but it's basically if the object already exists, um, and this is checked based on the hash, then it just reuses it and connects to it. So also if you to add two times the node one to, to, to a graph, you only would have the node one one time. And this is basically all checked by the, 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 
the hashing uh, function. Yeah, and for instance, here we can, um, yeah, what we're doing, we um, adding like the um, two edges, one to two, one to three, adding a node, adding an edge, um, and, and so on. So it's pretty, pretty clear. And um, can just check. Um, there are lots of helper functions on the graph, on the um, nodes, and on the edges, uh, on and on the edges, to check information um, we, which we are interested in, in the graph. Like for instance, um, to get the number of nodes, or to get the number uh, number of edges here. Um, yeah, um, directed graphs can be generated with a um, D graph. Um, and here the, the order of insert uh, matters. It's basically the order from, okay, this is my source node to my target node. So we have to add the edges in the right order. Um, the order of insertion also matters in the um, undirected graphs, but it's basically um, just for the, if you're interested in things like what are my um, neighbors and uh, what are my um, connected nodes and things like that. Um, the order of insertion is used um, to give the order of the reported list. That's basically how the internally the algorithms work. And so um, if you put add edges in a different order, your successors and so on would be, um, or neighbors would be reported in a different order. It would be the same set, but um, different order. Um, yeah, there are helper functions like uh, for graph traversal, things like um, successors, neighbors, and, and so on. Okay. Um, how do you um, examine what is in a graph? There's basically, um, um, I would say, three key functions or a few key functions. The nodes edges is basically giving you the information about the nodes and edges. Ad edges is adjacency gives you basically the, the neighbors or the neighborhood of, of a node. And the degree function allows you to query the, the node degree. A node degree is basically the sum of, um, the sum of um, edges a node has. Um, in the um, in the directed case, this is just a sum of in degrees and the out degrees. So the sum also of connecting connecting points, uh, connecting edges to a node. Um, yeah, and so you can list basically the nodes. Um, you can um, list the edges, um, get the uh, neighborhood of the node one here, and since it's connected to two and three. And makes somehow sense because we um, uh, put in the directed uh, links one and three, one to two, so um, yeah, makes makes all sense. And we can question the degree. In this case, the degree of the node one is two, and it's also um, because we basically um, uh, put in uh, two connections. Okay. Um, yeah, this reporting of edges, degrees, and so on, we can also do it for a subset. Um, this is sometimes important if we uh, basically want to have subgraphs and so on. Um, um, we would just um, query a, a subset of the of, of these. Yeah, and um, yeah, what else? Um, removing nodes, removing elements, uh, pretty simple. You just have to know what is your elements. Um, and then you um, use your objects basically to say, okay, I want to remove that uh, node or I want to remove that edge. Okay. Um, so far so good. You can, in, instead of just using um, this add functions, add, add edge functions and so on, we can also use the constructors that's basically here. And we could give a, a, a graph in here and um, create for instance, a graph based on another graph. Like for instance, here we have a, uh, an undirected graph G, and we just want to generate a directed graph from that. This means basically from the undirected graph, all the undirected edges split up in two edges in opposite directions. Um, yeah, basically things like that. We can use the constructor functions directly or just put in the edge list um, to, the, to the constructor. Okay. Um, like, I, like I said, basically any hashable object is working. And for every edge, we can associate any hashable object. Um, like for instance, here was one example in the documentation. For instance, your nodes could be proteins in a protein database, and um, your edge could then refer to an um, XML record, which gives you all the evidence about the protein-protein interactions and so on. But I would say it's, it's basically if you 
you can do whatever you want in your domain thing. It's just very powerful to store directly the, the objects and the attributes with the nodes and edges. Um, there's um, some way to access the edges and the neighbors. Um, so basically, if you build here a new graph um, um, consisting of two nodes, it's a undirected graph consisting of one and two, and it has some attribute with the edge, which is a color yellow. So we would have a, a yellow color here. And then we can basically um, um, just look, um, um, I don't know, we added the two nodes with the color yellow. We can basically just look at what is going on with, um, what is the neighborhood of this, this one, and the neighborhood of the one is the two, and it has a color yellow. So basically, um, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, you can also um, directly query the, not the nodes, but query the edges by providing the source and the target object. Um, or you could um, do something similar and go via the edges function. So there's a lot of different syntax to access ob objects and, and the attributes. Um, setting of the attributes is um, pretty easy. You would just um, access somehow the edge. Um, this would be here one of these syntax, and then you just set uh, an element in the in the attribute dictionary. For instance, here for the uh, uh, edge one three, we would store the color blue, and for the edge one two, we would store the the color uh, color red. And then if you look, like basically we stored here this attribute uh, attribute and di dictionary. Um, very helpful function is um, the adjacency or the adjacency items which allows basically iteration over graph objects. And so often what you do if you write graph algorithms, you're basically interested in this node, I want to iterate over all neighbors and, and so on. It depends a bit if you do um, depth first or uh, width, depth, I don't know, depth. And the other kind first, like how you traverse the graph is different. And depending on that, you have to write your algorithms, but um, it's basically, um, um, yeah, you would use the H H H adjacency by finding the neighbors to, to write your algorithms. Um, yeah, for instance, here, we would, um, we generate a new graph and we add weighted edges. Um, and here we have like basically the connections one, two and the respective weights. And then we can just iterate over this graph via this adjacency items. Um, so it's giving you basically n and the neighborhood. And for every of the item, we can then access here the attributes and only print in this case, um, um, only print the connections if the weight is um, smaller than a certain uh, um, certain certain threshold. So here we did a basically a full um, graph traversal and um, um, by the neighborhood and then use the attributes here to filter certain edges and all subsets of that. And this is, I would say, this, if you understood like something like in this direction, then you can write most of the graph algorithms. It's, it's more like figuring out, okay, how do you go over the neighborhood and how do you filter based on the properties of your objects and the attributes you have on the nodes and the edges. Um, exactly similar things, we, we, uh, similar helper functions are here, for instance, that we can just um, iterate over all edges and a given attribute in our dictionary. And so it, um, this is often what you want, like similar like here, you want to do, you want to iterate over everything and just um, use a certain attribute for filtering, for instance, the weight in this weighted graph. And there's a sim simple help of functions just using the edges data. And this gives you an iterator and you can just um, get your nodes and the weight. And then you can just um, quickly um, um, do something similar here. So this is more like a, a, a shortcut. Okay, um, adding attributes, it's pretty simple. Uh, on the graph, you just um, can provide them in the, in the constructor or you use um, this dictionary syntax to just, um, to just write this on the, on the graph. Um, similar for the attributes, I would just say if you're familiar with um, dictionaries, then you, it's very easy to do this here in the dictionary syntax. Otherwise, you can also provide this as, um, as arguments to the constructor. So everything which is not mapped on the node, um, this is basically attribute data, which is put into your attribute dictionary. Um, okay. Similar for edge attributes. Okay, uh, not much magic here. Um, it's more like you store in the edge attribute what you, what you want to store. Okay.
I'm jumping quite far, fast over that, but I think the, the basic concept is the, the important thing you have to understand here. And then for the actual syntax, please look in the, in, the, um, in the documentation. I think the important thing here is to understand this um, general concept of, of graphs and um, storing information and nodes and edges and using this then for, for algorithms. Um, for the directed graphs, we have some additional, um, additional functions on the dgraph. It's basically similar things like we had with the uh, um, neighbors um, or adjacency here. Here's basically we have like basically out edges, um, in edges, in degree, out degree, uh, predecessors, successors. It's more like because you only want, you don't want to go over both edges, but you want to follow the direction of, of the edges and just know which subset is going in and out of nodes. Um, Otherwise, very similar syntax. Um, it just matters now uh, in which order you um, generate your edges. Um, exactly, and for the directed graphs, you have things like successors and, and neighbors uh, and so on. Um, yeah, important thing. Some, some algorithms, are, of course, require directed graphs. Um, like for instance, if you look for the shortest path in a network, um, you need, ah, oh, and the shortest pass could still work. Um, man, okay, so I don't have a good example for that. Probably cycle detection or something like, shortest pass, I'm not even sure, like, because it's, I don't know, yeah, it should work. Um, but, other things, it's, it's probably more problematic if you have direct one. The, the recommendation is you, you have to, um, if you use algorithms on which only work on undirected graphs, you should convert your directed to an undirected graph first. Um, but this is pretty easy. You would use again the, the constructor and just put in your um, directed graph and so on. Um, last but not least, multigraphs is, um, yeah, the, the only difference is now that you would call the multigraph constructor. And then you can add basically multiple edges which connect the same nodes. Like for instance, here you have two edges connecting one to two um, with different weights. So it's basically you have one and two and two edges connecting them and uh, a third edge from two to three. And then, um, yeah, you, you see basically, um, yeah, for the different nodes, the different degrees and uh, the, of course, um, um, it's some weight like you have here in this case, things like weighted degree, and it would use the weights of the multi edges to calculate that. So this becomes pretty, pretty complicated for us. Okay. Um, uh, last but not least, some craft generators and some general algorithms. Um, yeah, there's a large set of um, uh, classical graph operations, like things if you want to do subgraphs, uh, unions, disjoint unions, Cartesian products, um, compose, um, complement, and so on. This is basically like this set operations, I would call them set operations, but on graph objects, which are often very helpful. Um, yeah, and then the conversion to directed and undirected graphs. We have a thing like um, the um, classical small graphs uh, generators for them, like things like um, Tutti graph, Peterson graph, and so on. So if you're from graph theory, you know what I'm talking about, but otherwise, um, okay. Um, I think the thing we all, uh, yeah, there are some other graphs we all know, uh, like Barabasi Albert or something. We, everyone, some, I assume somebody heard this in the, in the, in the presentation. Um, so they are like for certain domains, there are uh, or Erdos Renyi graph, you heard this, definitely on some presentation at some point, had no clue what it means. And it's just like certain ways of generating certain graphs. And this is basically here provided all and you don't have to implement it uh, yourself. Um, or classical bipartite graphs, uh, complete bipartite graphs and things like that. This is pro probably more used. Stochastic graph generators we have. And what else do we have? Um, yeah. I would say this is basically it. You can of course import export in classical graph formats like um, GML, GraphML, um, and so on. Um, yeah, and have a lot of um, analyzing um, functionality. I'm not going so much in the analyzing thing. I just wanted to um, show two or three um, examples here. You can easily get things like um, connected components. You can um, get the degrees. You can do clustering on your graphs. Um, 
things like shorted path, basically lots of these things you normally do. It's a one a one liner, and um, so basically you can. Uh, I don't know what you want to do, but basically what you want to do it's there. Like if you <laughs> on Ramsey Steiner tree vertex cover, I don't know. It, so it's before you start implementing something, it's basically here. You have all the spectral analyzers of graphs, matrix representations for bipartite things, uh, boundary bridges, you know, your whole centrality measures, centrality via eigenvectors is often done, degrees is often done, closeness is often done, dispersion actually often. What else do we have? Um, second order centrality. Yeah, I would say if it's not on here, it's probably too, um, too obscure to publish it or do it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Exactly. Uh, last but not least, drawing graphs. There's some little support uh, with matplotlib, but I basically wouldn't use that. I would see network X more as a, it's really the, the data structure and the algorithm part of the whole thing. For visualization, there are um, different tools and depends really on your problem domain. Um, you could load this into Neo4j um, as a graph database. You could use things like um, Cytoscape, Giphy. Um, if you want like a more of a GUI kind graph exploratory thing, um, otherwise, you have um, D3, um, you know, JavaScript based libraries, uh, Cytoscape JS. Um, yeah, but this really depends, I would say, much more on your domain. Um, I would always work in Python with the graphs and you know, with this library. And then for the visualization, um, I would, you have to look for the tool which is, which is um, providing the solution for your problem.